but the reality is God has done an amazing work in each one of their lives. And we're going to hear about that this morning. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So, Justin. Yes. So this is Justin Sterling. Welcome, Justin. Thank you. Mr. Let him ride on my back. That's right. <laughs> we have Jeremy Tenafalls. <laughs> Ileana Gonzalez. <laughs> and Dory Mast. Welcome. Welcome. So, Justin, the very good first question is this. So, we've just been talking about like the things that God has us, not God, the things that we are tied to that hold us back from everything that God has for us, right? So in your life, in the last year especially, what is the one thing that you would say the enemy has used to hold you back from everything God has for you? It was definitely porn. That was something that I was struggling with probably for seven to eight years, I'd say. And then the retreat was like the biggest turning point in my life. That's where I like, I was like, man, God is really, really real to me right now. And then I was like, I can rely on his strength a lot more than I had yeah. been doing. So, you know, he helps me get through. Yeah. So you would say on that day, on that day, how, how long were you quote unquote set free from porn at that point? Maybe three to four months or so. Yeah. And then, like, I think God was like, you know, you're only using my strength now. I'm going to throw in some temptations. And I was like, gone. I had given in almost immediately. Yeah. I was like, there's still a lot we got to work on. Yeah. Man mainly me. Mainly me. <laughs> but... This story is not finished. We're going to talk a little bit more about the rest of the story and what God has done. But yeah, it's a path, right? Okay. So Jeremy, what is the one thing that you would say is holding you back or was holding you back from everything God has for you? Uh, it was probably laziness or um, tiredness because I would read at night and then I would just always feel really extra tired when I really needed to read my Bible. And then sometimes I would just go to sleep. Yeah. One thing you need to know about Jeremy, he's probably one of the most authentic and like deep persons that I've ever come across. Even as a young, like he, he came into this thing as a sixth grader. So now he's very older, but one of the, my favorite things about Jeremy is like, we would ask him like the simple one questions that I get to ask you guys when I'm up here and and he'd always come up with the deep, deep questions, like, or the deep answers, like, well, I think God's just calling me to do these things. And everyone else is talking about ice cream, and Jeremy's like, yeah, but what about this? It was really good. So anyway, so that I think it's funny the way that, like, he'll, the enemy will use laziness, and he'll use those things in your life to trip you up when he knows the depth in which you walk through this thing. So anyway, um, yes, Ileana, what would you say is the one thing that, the enemy used to hold you back? I would say the same thing as Justin. Porn was a big thing in my life. I struggled with it for many years, and it like just consumes you, because you're like by yourself. It's very isolating, and you know, I the retreat also was a turning point too, because after that, I kind of got, I got free, and then like five months later, you know, I got temptations again to like you said like and I turn back yeah but I think the cool thing and, and to go along with what you're saying is if if you were to ask me right which you have not but here you go um, if you would ask me I would look at your pathway here and um, all the things that you've walked through and I think that even though you and Justin would probably say the same thing, yes, I had freedom that day, and yes, it's a path, and yes, sometimes I trip up. The person that I saw a year ago and the boldness in which you walked and the way that you sing and the way that you do your things is an a, is amazing thing that God has done in spite of some of the times that we trip up and we do get lost on the side of the road. But that's really, really cool. Yes. So, Dory, speaking of the retreat, um, what is something that God spoke to you 
about at the retreat or something that he said to you at the retreat? So um, during the whole retreat, I felt like he was speaking to me and was like, you need to ask for boldness. You need to ask for this gift of healing. Um, and we had the one night where it was like a Holy Spirit moment and I go up and I hear God say, you know, pray for this boldness, pray for the gift of the Spirit. And, you know, I had the moment, I was crying, and it was this great, amazing moment. And then he said, go and act on it. So I go around the room, and there's a bunch of people there, and I'm praying for healing in their life and, you know, feeling what they feel. And it's just, you know, since that, you know, I've lived out this gift of healing. So. Yeah. So speaking of, um, Ileana, so Dory, is Dory one of the ones that spoke into your life or, like, so God spoke to her, and then did she speak to you in, uh, that night? She did. She prayed over me a lot, and she even spoke in tongues. And, like, even after the retreat, well, after we were done with that night, she was like, I just felt like there was a lot of, like, things surrounding you. And, you know, that was interesting. I would never, like, had an experience like that. And, you know, she spoke in tongues to me and prayed over me. So Yeah. Dory, do you remember what you prayed over her? Nope, <laughs> not so, exactly. <laughs> so all I know is, is, is I remember this part, and you can yeah. expound on it if you feel like it. Um, I remember you said that like you were going through one thing at a time with Ileana. Mm -hmm. I remember you were like you were fighting this, and then you fought this, and then you kept fighting that. And so yeah. is there anything that yeah. triggers a memory? It, it was, you know, I remember that and just like, feeling exactly how she feels and it felt like there were like dark things like surrounding her and I could you know pinpoint them and pray over them I don't remember the words I was saying but I remember what it was like yeah there. now Eliana back to you quickly do you remember a lot of those things that she broke off of you or that the Lord obviously that the Lord broke off of you in that in that time or just kind of all-inclusive kind of all-inclusive okay yeah yeah all right, Jeremy, what is one thing that the Lord has shared with you this year? Well, at the retreat, he shared something with you and anything that the Lord has spoken into your life since then. Um, well, at the retreat, um, the Holy Spirit night, I went forward and someone prayed for me and said, Phil, and then I got knocked out, which was pretty cool. And <laughs> while I was knocked out, I could just feel the presence of the Holy Spirit just surrounding me and comforting me. And I was like really cool because I had never encountered God like that before. Um, and when I regained consciousness kind of, um, he said, go and lead. I don't know what that looks like right now, but I'm just looking for ways to imply that. Yeah, so I would say, um, as an outsider looking in, I can say, and this is something I, I've been praying for, Justin, because, like, so I know a lot of these stories, and we talked about this as we came home from the retreat. Like, we talked about some of the things that God was saying and doing and all that. And he shared with me that, that word about go and lead. And I think one of the things that God shared with me for Justin, I told him this the other day, was that, like, so many times in our lives we look at leaders and we say, well, I don't look like that. Or I don't look like that, I don't look like this, and I don't look like Chad, I don't look like anybody else. But what God is calling you and what he's calling each of us really in the face is wherever you are, look at the people that are around you. Look at the people that might be following you. Whether you want to be a leader or not, they are looking at you for guidance or they're looking at you because you claim to be different or they're looking at you because Jesus is with you and those are the types of things and so what I told Jeremy is I said you might not be the stereotypical leader but you keep walking and you're gonna all of a sudden see people following you because you lead a certain way and there's a depth to who you are so that would be what I would say so Justin um, number one, what has God spoken into your life this year? And like, what has this last year looked like? Well, what he's spoken into my life, I feel like he was telling me to carry out the Great Commission, which is to go and make disciples of all nations. So this summer, I'm going to the Dominican Republic to fulfill what I believe I'm called to do. And something I did 
pretty much as soon as we got back from the retreat, I was like, hey guys, this is really cool. We're all like after the spirit right now. Let's, let's, uh, let's make a Bible study. So we did that and now we have a Bible study. And that's really cool. That is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that, I think the, the main thing that I love about that comment and the ways that that has worked itself out is, you know, a lot of us can have experiences or we can have encounters or we can have a one-time thing like, oh man, we did that one thing that one time and, and it changed things and then we went back to our normal lives and things just went back to normal. I think the Lord has given us a, a calling to not just receive one day, one time, but he's calling us to walk that thing out and it has to look like something. And when we're saved from something, it looks like something and it moves you to do something and it calls you to be different and not do the same things you've always done. And it's not being perfect and it's not not messing up, but it is striving to be more like him. And so, yes, start a, start a small group. Yes, start reading your Bible more. It looks like something. Take over the Mennonite school which is something that these guys are adamant about. And so, yes, that is that. All right, Jeremy, what is something that God has been teaching you this year? Uh, just that consistency is one of the most important things because if you're sporadic about something, you're not going to get better at it. You have to be consistent and willing to put in the time and effort into reading the Bible or really anything that you do. You have to be consistent with it. Yeah. Okay, Ileana. So in the light of this past year, is there anything that you would like to share about how this year has gone or what it is that God is kind of moving you in this year? Um, I feel like God's definitely been using me a lot more, I don't know, yeah. with like everything that's been going on. And I don't know, I just feel like, like before at the retreat, like, you know, after that, I was kind of like, oh yeah, I'm like so ready for what God's going to do with me. Like, I'm so ready. But then like, you know, like life happened and, you know, the feeling was not as there. But I feel like now it's definitely like, like more there now too. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the things that like the God's, God has been speaking to me, especially about you in this season is like, there's that, there's that parable about like the talents and like you have these many talents, but when you, when you use them for your glory or when you hand over your things, he will use you that much more. Right. And so like I watched you walking out that thing last year and this whole year I'm looking at, well, she's on worship a lot more. The boldness in which she um, carries herself um, is, is amazing. And like now she's helping Carly do kids con and like she's walking this thing out. And like I, my point is, I think that God is opening up doors because of your obedience, right? Mm -hmm. Would you like to tell um, these awesome people what, um, there was a very nice lady, I don't know her name, but she spoke something to you after first service. Would you like to share that? Yeah, so basically after the service, you know, we were down there and we were praying and stuff and she came over and she was like, you know, you did really well like when you were singing and I, I got like the, um, she said I got the, the spirit bumps or something yeah. like that. <laughs> and so that was pretty cool. Um, and she was like, you did such an amazing job and you know, God's really using you and stuff like that. And that kind of made me feel good because something that I definitely want to do when I'm, I want other people to encounter God when I'm singing and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool too. Right. And I think, Have that. so the one thing that I would, I would ask you and Justin, you can both ask, answer this question. Um, so we talked about your freedom. Would you say that this year has been perfect? Like you, you walked this thing out perfectly and you like, that was a once and it's all the way done. You have, you have victory. No. No. Nope. <laughs> and do you think that God still chooses to use you in spite of that fact? Yes. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> So a lot of times I think you can understand this um, in our lives. We, we feel like, and I, I, I can speak for myself and I know these guys are speaking that for themselves also, is that so many times in our lives we go, well, 
like like Justin or no, like Jeremy in, in the in the skit. Why would God use me after all that I've done? Why would God use me after these mistakes? Why would God use me in spite of all the things that I mess up? And this last week I did bad, and this week I'm going to try to. Why would God? And that's just who He is. He wants to use you. He wants to use the, the, the lowest. He wants to use the Gideons who are the lowest of the lowest tribe. He wants to use them because he gets the glory while you're singing up here. He gets the glory as you're sharing your testimonies everywhere you go and you talk to all your people at, at Greenwood. There was a funny story that his parents told me one time. Chad and Joyce, uh, Justin's parents, said... Justin, as a sixth grader, is at Milford High School, and every person in the school knows who Justin is. Why? It's Justin, man. Look at him. A, he's seven feet tall. They can just see him. But B, like, his personality is, is a one of drawing people in, and he's, like, he's a people person. So that's the facts. Like, God is going to use him. And yes, the Great Commission, and yes, the um, Dominican Republic, right? Yep. So... Yes, teen missions and all that. But yes, you are changing things here. So, Dory, tell us, what is the greatest lesson that God taught you at the retreat in this year? So, I would say, throughout my whole testimony, the greatest lesson I was taught was, he must increase and I must decrease. Throughout all of it, it took surrendering my own wants and my own needs to his. And taken me from someone who was, you know, scared and didn't have passions and who only thought about myself and my own wants and totally transformed me to now. And it took daily, like, saying, I'm going to think about his wants, his needs, well, his wants and not my needs today. Yeah. I think that's what I was saying. Yeah. Um, and just throughout it, constantly, I think it goes back to a pride thing where it's, you know, I cared so much about myself and what I want and not about what his wants were. Yeah. And because he is everything and I am nothing. Yeah. So everything should be about him. Yeah. So in general, not just these four, but my, the entire youth group that I get to hang out with every week. One of the driving things that I've always found to be true is they are probably the most inclusive bunch that I've ever come across. Every new person that comes just feels loved and wanted and the fact of that is evident because these guys are in the midst of the things that we struggle with they are quick quick to pray for each other quick to speak life into each other quick to um you know introduce themselves and do all the things and like we did at first service they are quick to as soon as one is here or one is here they are quick to surround them and like make them feel so loved and so all of that to say i think it's an amazing thing that we've seen and so in light of that, Dory, I know that what is the, so we spoke initially of the empathy version, but I would like to hear what it is that God specifically, how does he use empathy in this situation with you? And what is the gift that he gave you at the retreat? So I think part of it was, well, I'd like to say I'm very empathetic and I feel what people feel, but it's not always true. Sometimes I don't understand people. And at the retreat, it was, I was going around and praying for these people. And as soon as I laid hands on them, I knew exactly what they felt. And I felt it. And I think it's given me a greater understanding of what people go through is this thing of I can lay my hands on someone and feel how they feel. And it, it gives me opportunities in like, you know, like just me and God praying to fully, you know, press in and pray for people in secret, as well as, you know, out loud and for these people, just the gift of like empathy and feeling what they feel is just, you know, incredible too. Yeah. That's a really cool thing. It's like, it's the empathy version. I know. Yeah. It can I'll, be I'll hard leave that too, one. Yeah. Because, you know, it's painful. Like you're yeah. feeling painful emotions. Yeah. I tell, I tell my wife all the time and, and, and she is not here at this service. So hopefully this goes okay. But, but I tell her all the time, like I am, I'm not the most empathetic person and I'll be honest with you. I'm not always the nicest person either. But one of the things that God has given me, and this is why I love bringing it out in other people, is like he has given me a heart for people, right? And so I think that's a really cool thing to possess in that, like to feel other people's pains and feel other people's, the things that they're struggling with and be able to pinpoint them. And, and like the Lord gives you that knowledge to bring him glory. 
And there's no reason you should know that, right? So the Lord gives you that so that in that situation, God is glorified because you don't know those things, right? Okay, so in closing, is there anything that the Lord would say, you know what, the Lord wanted me to share this this morning that we have not yet covered? No is a fine answer. I have something that I would like to say. Um, so this was like one time after I had given back in after the retreat and I was just sitting there thinking like, why are you still like keen on choosing me to carry out your plan? And then, okay, this kind of relates back to a book that I had read at school. I forget what it's called, but it's about these two pigs. One is like pretty much as close to perfect as you can get. And the other one is just a mess. His life is just completely a mess. And they're both invited to go talk to God. And when they're both talking to God, the first thing that God says to both of them is, I love you. And second, I love you. And third, I love you. So then in that moment, that's what God was saying to me. And he was like, that's the reason why I need you to do all these things. And I was just sitting there and I started crying. <laughs> Sounds right. <Yeah. laughs> Jeremy, anything else? Dory. Okay. Well, let's, let's thank these guys for being here. Thanks for sharing their testimonies. Yeah. So like I said, um, it is my pleasure that I get to hang out with these kids every week. I get to hear these stories. I get to walk these things out with them and encourage them. And so as we move into the worship time um, and Joyce continues to play, we just, I just want to speak those same things over you guys this morning. Like, like we've been talking about, there's always going to be moments that you have a choice to choose God and to choose him and to do all the things that he's called you to do. It's a moment. And so maybe this morning is that moment for some people. Maybe this morning you would say, hey, I want the freedom that those kids seem to be possessing. And maybe it won't be perfect. And maybe I might still struggle sometimes. But I would like to lay some things down at the altar and say, God, today, this is a stake in the ground moment that I don't want to let slip by. Because like every one of these donkeys, you have the ability to say, not today, I'm good. Not today, I have this thing together. Not today, maybe he can ride on my back because I have this thing figured out, right? And you have that option. But this morning, my hope and my prayer for you is that you would take advantage of every moment. And maybe just this small voice that one of those kids shared and said, hey, maybe that can be true for me also. What if God is calling me out of this? What if I don't have to struggle with these things anymore? And what if God wants me to walk in freedom? What if, isn't that something? So this morning, I'm just gonna pray. We are gonna continue to worship. And if you just wanna lay some things down at this altar, please do that. If you don't wanna walk back out those same front doors with the same things that you're carrying, please, Lord, let them go. And these kids are circling the wagon and they're gonna come back up and they would love to pray for you. So this morning, Lord, we just thank you so much for the, the, the amazing work that you've done in these kids' lives, for the amazing work that you've done in so many of our lives, and the way that we can look at you and we can look at our lives and say, man, I remember when I was a, a sham. I remember when I was lost and you came and found me. And on our darkest, our darkest day, you are waiting on the balcony, waiting for us to come home. And you can't wait to wrap us in your love. You can't wait to wrap us in our sonship and our daughtership. And you can't wait to bring us back into the fold and say, what was lost has finally come home. So God, this morning I pray, Lord, that people would just lay themselves down, figuratively or literally. I pray, Lord, that things would be broken off this morning, that chains would be gone. And Lord, I thank you that we serve the same God who would do the same things in these kids' lives, and he wants to do it again. He wants to set us all free. 
So this morning, I pray that you would do those things in our lives and that we would walk out free and we can walk through this next big week rejoicing about what you are willing to do in each one of our lives. What you have done and what you continue to do. And we have a vision of the cross and what you are willing to do for us. And a vision of the empty tomb knowing that the same victory that you have is available to us. And we don't have to struggle with the same things we always have. So God, I pray victory this morning. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for everything you are doing. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's stand and we can worship him.